This is an ABC News special report. Now reporting, David Muir. Good morning, everyone. We're coming on the air because there is breaking news. The Supreme Court has just officially issued now one of its most consequential rulings in recent decades. Uh, just moments ago, the court ruling uh, in favor, again, of putting this case back down to the lower courts on the issue of abortion and whether or not women whose health is at risk uh, should be able to have an abortion uh, in the ER. This is specific to the state of Idaho. Of course, this was a challenge uh, to the states after uh, Roe was over turned and then multiple states uh, no longer uh, made abortion available in their states. I want to get right to Terry Moran because Terry, as you know, uh, this was leaked yesterday for a time, uh, an egregious error by the court to have it posted online temporarily. Uh, we were unclear whether or not that was the official decision, but it looks at this point that it's almost exactly the same as to what we saw yesterday. Word for word on, on first and cursory reading, David, it does look word for word and certainly the result is the same. So this this case, as you point out, was a clash between that Idaho state ban on abortion uh, with no exception for the health of the woman. Abortions were uh, legal in Idaho only under this law, only after rape and incest or to prevent death, necessary to prevent death. That clashed with a federal law that uh, called for anyone who goes into an emergency room in the United States gets emergency care, and the government argued that must include those rare and tragic cases where a woman emergency care means termination of the pregnancy. And uh, in this case, what they have done is they said, we can't decide it right now. And the reason is, uh, although the court doesn't explain itself, Amy Coney, Justice Amy Coney Barrett does write and notes two developments that make this wrong to decide now. The Idaho Supreme Court revised its law in an opinion after the court got this case, and the Idaho State Legislature revised it after the court got this case. And so, essentially, although they don't explain it officially, you can uh, judge from Justice Coney Barrett's uh, uh, opinion here that what they decided was is just too fluid right now. Send it back, let the new case come to them, because this is definitely coming back to the Supreme Court at some point, on the right law, developing the facts with lower court opinions and briefs and dissents, and then we'll take it, <clears throat> is, is looking like what the court is doing here. So, Terry, essentially this means this is not a final decision here, but as far as it affects women in the short term, particularly women in Idaho, uh, this means that if their health is at risk, that the, if they go into an ER in Idaho, uh, that if an abortion is needed, they would be able to get that in the ER. That's right. Right now, uh, the, 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 it returns to the original action by a federal trial judge, which put the Idaho law on hold. So women who have those terrible complications that might require the termination of a pregnancy in order to prevent you know, massive bleeding, renal failure, hypoxic brain injury, all things that might not lead to death, but that are very serious consequences if the pregnancy continues, they will still be able to get uh, an abortion in the in the emergency rooms of Idaho, they have been fly helicoptering women out of those emergency rooms to Portland, to other states, because of the concern that doctors could be prosecuted under the Idaho law in the interim. Right now, that Idaho law has been stayed once again, and so the women in Idaho can uh, get the care, the emergency care uh, that they need, if that includes the termination of a pregnancy in Idaho. All right, Terry, stick with us. Terry Moran live at the Supreme Court there for us this morning. Of course, this is the biggest abortion case since the court overturned Roe uh, nearly two years ago now, which resulted in abortion bans in more than a dozen states. Uh, for the first time since that ruling, the court weighing in this morning on the scope of a state abortion ban. It comes about 24 hours, I mentioned, after that document uh, was uh, mistakenly and briefly posted online, uh, but it did turn out to be the actual decision. The case is out of Idaho. It's Moyle versus the United States. And essentially, as Terry just pointed out, it asks if a federal law governing emergency care protects access to abortion at hospitals when a woman's health is at risk. And for now, the court is saying we're going to send this back down to the lower courts. Uh, women whose health is at risk or are at risk uh, in particular cases can, in fact, get an abortion at an ER uh, in the state of Idaho. Again, this was a t test, the first significant.
significant test to these state abortion bans. I want to bring in Rachel Scott, who has covered uh, the issue of abortion rights across the country. And Rachel, first off, uh, people who are trying to fight back against these state abortion bans uh, recognize that this is a, a temporary victory uh, mm -hmm. it, 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 with them signaling today that they're going to send it back. Abortion providers and doctors that I have spoken to are, in fact, calling this only a temporary victory. An emphasis on the word temporary because they are expecting more legal challenges. They know that this law can change once again, and that could spark confusion for women in the state of Idaho. They're also calling this a small measure of justice because it's not just Idaho, David. After Roe versus Wade was overturned, you have 21 states that have severely restricted access to abortion. 14 states have near total bans on abortion. And there are seven states, including the state of Idaho, that had laws on the books that did not specify an exception to protect or save the health of the mother. And so this morning, you have abortion providers who are saying, well, what about the women in the other states? What about the women that we have talked to that have been pushed to the brink of death, who were turned away and told to come back when their symptoms had worsened? What about the doctors who have, are leaving these states because they say they can no longer provide the standard of care that they want to provide to their patients in states like Idaho who have these restricted bans? And what about the residents who do not want to practice in these states because of these bans, David? Rachel Scott with us as well. Rachel and Terry, my thanks to you both. I want to do one more question before we go off the air here to Devin Dwyer, who covers the Supreme Court for us as well. Devin, putting this case aside, we know that there is a presidential debate tonight, the earliest ever presidential debate, so many historic firsts with this. We have two presidents on that stage, a current one and a former one. Uh, obviously, this issue of abortion very likely to come up. The issue uh, that has not been resolved by the court uh, and will not be today is this broad issue of immunity that President Trump, former President Donald Trump, has been fighting before the court with these cases uh, in involving January 6th and the documents at Mar-a-Lago, whether or not a former president can be uh, criminally prosecuted or whether or not there is total immunity. And we're not going to hear that decision before they get on that stage tonight. And we're not, David. The Supreme Court didn't hand it down today. We don't know whether it will come tomorrow. The Supreme Court also just indicated they won't finish up their work by the end of this week by tradition before July. That means they're into next week. But that hugely consequential decision, can a former president be criminally charged, remains unanswered. And the court won't deliver that to us uh, tonight before this highly, highly consequential debate. All right, Devin, be sure to appreciate it. We'll continue to follow the court. Several significant decisions still to come from this court during this term. Devin, thank you. Our thanks to Terry and Rachel as well. We're going to return you to regular programming. I'm David Muir here in New York. For many of you, it's Good Morning America. And of course, I'll see you later today for World News Tonight. And then, of course, ABC will be carrying the CNN presidential debate right here on ABC tonight. We hope you'll join us for that. Good day.